The first study I would like to share uh, with you is uh, entitled Trajectories of Emergent Central Sleep Apnea During Continuous Positive Airway Therapy. And you have, um, among the authors, uh, people from uh, ResMed, from uh, data scientists, and uh, Atul Malotra from the US, Peter Sistuli, and uh, me from Europe with Olga Vore. So this is a study flow. We decided to look at a random sample of 30% uh, of the patients starting CPAP in the US. Again, uh, these are US data from January uh, 2015 uh, until the end of the year. The, the initial sample was uh, 247,000 people. We excluded people with uh, less than one session of at least one hour using CPAP. The first device uh, should be uh, CPAP, and uh, at the end, to summarize, we, we included in the analysis 133,000 people, which is uh, clearly a very huge population reflecting the real-life situation of CPAP initiation, at least in the US. And uh, as you can see, we can nicely uh, separate different trajectories during the first three months of CPAP. You have the typical OSA patient with no uh, uh, evidence for central events and uh, a global apnea hypopnea index below five, very stable. And we have three different trajectories or three different populations, if you want, of people with central sleep apnea during CPAP. You can see that the global prevalence of uh, these three categories together was 3.5 percent, so it's clearly below some of the prevalence uh, rate uh, previously published. And you can see, oh, sorry, one population with uh, persistent central sleep apnea. These are the central apneas. One population with transient uh, central sleep apnea, and, and you can see that using the telemonitoring, it's really easy to uh, see whether you, when you have a normalization of the central events uh, under CPAP, and you have the population of emergent central sleep apnea under CPAP. So clearly, different patterns, different trajectories that cannot be summarized by a unique measurement during CPAP titration in the lab, for example. So just to, to tell you the prevalence of uh, <coughs> uh, transient sleep apnea is less than 2%, emergent less than 1%, and approximately 1% of these people exhibited persistent central sleep apnea. When looking at a forest plot, summarizing the, the risk factors for therapy termination in different patient uh, subgroups, you can see that the younger people, and it, it is well known from previous studies, are more likely to terminate therapy in the three months. But also, when you have a reference of a typical obstructive sleep apnea, you can see that transient and even more persistent and even more emergent central sleep apnea is associated with a higher risk of uh, CPAP therapy termination. You know, for the clinician, this is a major new information because I think in your clinical practice, you consider that uh, an RHI with five uh, central events per hour is nothing. It was my, my experience in clinical practice. And actually, these data are demonstrating that even a moderate persistent central sleep apnea is associated with an increased risk of therapy termination. And uh, this is, a, I think, a very nice figure uh, showing uh, with a multivariate Cox model survival uh, the probability to remain treated by CPAP and uh, this is a one-year follow-up. And you can see that classical OSA uh, has a lower risk for CPAP termination and then transient uh, sleep apnea, persistent central sleep apnea, and emergent central sleep apnea. So we have identified different phenotypes 
uh, during CPAP treatment, uh, characterizing different uh, clusters of patients with uh, central sleep apnea that are associated with a significant outcome, therapy termination, and uh, CPAP compliance. <coughs>